Welcome to this tutorial showing you how to produce three pieces of work in response to the artist Victoria Seema. And let's get going on the first one. I've already opened up a photo I've taken in Photopia and I'm going to grab the rectangle select tool and press shift so I get a square selection in the center of my piece that takes in some of the landscape and some of the sky. I'm then going to press Ctrl C to copy that selection and Ctrl V to paste that selection onto its own layer, as you can see here. And then I'm going to edit, transform, flip vertically. And that flips that selection vertically. And I'm just gonna shimmy it up so I've got the mountain on top slightly further away upwards than the mountain underneath. Okay, and then I'm going to make that layer invisible for a minute and work on my background layer. And I'm going to use the magic wand and shift to select the whole of the sky. And then I'm going to select invert and that has then selected all of the landscape instead. And I'm gonna go back to my new layer and you can see the mask is over that bit. And if I press delete, I bring in the mountains underneath. And that is pretty much it, other than cropping it down into a square. So it's similar in format to Victoria Seema's work. And then I'm going to merge the layers together. So right click, merge down, and that merges those two layers together. At which point I can just play with the image a bit using image adjustments, brightness and contrast. And I'm just gonna bring up the contrast and bring down the brightness just to make the image a bit more dramatic. And that is the first response to Victoria Seema's work done and dusted. So let's move on to the next response. And once again, I've opened up a photo I took on holiday and this time I'm going to apply a layer of color over the top. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to use the rectangle select to select off the landscape. And I'm going to fill that with a hot pink, a bit like that. Okay. And with the paint bucket, I'm going to fill that in. Okay, then I'm going to get rid of that mask and I'm going to go back to the color select and I'm going to choose like a navy blue and use the paint bucket to fill in the rest of that piece. I'm then going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and I'm going to whack up the blur so that it blends those two together and I'm going to go to the drop down menu above the layer and I'm going to go to multiply. And you can see it then blends the two layers together so I can see the landscape below. Next up, I'm going to go to image adjustments, hue saturation, and I'm just going to desaturate it just a bit because it's a bit powerful, that color. Okay, now I'm ready to add some text into my piece. And so I'm going to grab the text tool, make a text box, and I'm going to type in what I want to say. You bother me. Okay. And making sure I've got an appropriate font that I want and it being the right size. And then I'm going to put it just above the landscape near the foreground here. I'm going to make it look like it's floating off of the surface. But first of all, I'm going to make it glow. So I'm going to go double click on the layer, go to outer glow. And I've already selected a hot pink and I've really only got a size of five on. That's all it needs. And you can see it's got a very basic glow that I want. Okay, now I'm gonna put a um, bit of light shining on the ground underneath. So I'm gonna use the ellipse shape and I'm gonna draw a white slim ellipse underneath and then use the arrow tool to just rotate it and resize it to make it fit underneath the lettering. And then I'm going to right click on that layer and rasterize it so it's no longer a live shape. And actually, I'm just going to quickly resize it a bit more, make it a bit bigger and make sure it matches the slope of the slope underneath. 
I'm then going to go to Filter and Blur and Gaussian Blur again. And I'm just going to give it a bit of a blur. Click OK. And then use the drop down menu and go to Overlay. And you can see that it looks like a light shining underneath the floating text. I'm just going to make it a bit bigger. And that's it. That's the second response done and dusted. So let's move on to our third and final response. And I've taken this photograph of a cup and saucer. And I have also grabbed this photograph that I took on holiday. And I'm going to use the rectangle select to grab a bit of the sea down here, these waves. This is the best picture of waves I have. So I'm going to control C to copy it and control V to paste it in. And I'm going to use the arrow tool and the shift key to make sure I resize it without stretching it or squishing it. And I'm going to place it where I want it to be over the mug. And I'm just going to make that layer invisible while I now grab the ellipse select tool. There it is. And I draw an ellipse kind of like the liquid would be if I had liquid in the cup. Okay. And I'm going back to the layer on top and making it visible again and going select inverse and then pressing delete and that's got rid of everything around that mask. Okay, then I'm going to draw another mask and this is going to help me to stay away from a certain amount of the sea while I just erase some of it. So I'm going to select inverse and that's going to protect the sea in the cup while I grab the eraser tool and make it a kind of medium size. And this really is where I think the eraser tool on Photopia comes into its own. Uh, it's not the smoothest of eraser tools. And whilst that would usually perhaps be a bit of a criticism, when it comes to creating waves, I think that it is pretty good. Okay, so I've taken a kind of wavy line there, but now I'm going to use the eraser tool just to cut into it a bit here and there, just to make it feel a bit more wavy. There we go, looking good. Okay, a bit more down on the right. Okay, looking good. And then I can zoom out. And one last thing I want to do is just make that C a bit more saturated. So image adjustments, hue saturation, and bring up the saturation a little bit, makes it a bit more blue. Click OK. And that is it. Our final response is done and dusted. And so there's three ways to respond to Victoria Seema. And that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you find it helpful.